Good morning, friends. Prepared Suburbanite back at you. Well, the redacted affidavit was actually released yesterday afternoon. And uh, so now we know everything they want us to know. <laughs> it was uh, pretty much as predicted. Um, more than 50% of it was blacked out. And depending on where you get your news, those that uh, those uh, news reporters that are um, on the right um, have said that there's really no substance in this. That Donald Trump had the ultimate authority to uh, declassify any documents he wanted, and um, you go to the left-hand side, and they are basically saying uh, he should be in jail and um, I think uh, Rob Reiner actually said yes he should be uh, convicted very soon right now so um, the affidavit really didn't show us much of anything but there is some humor in this so I'll uh, explain this and a couple other thoughts right after the intro Um, trying a, uh, an, an experiment of sorts here. Um, the last few videos that I've done, I uh, um, taped them or videoed them outdoors um, up against the backdrop of the woods that uh, surround my property. And in those woods lives um, a whole bunch of cicadas that love to make noise. Um, not sure if it's uh, uh, a mating call or if it's just uh, wonderful to be alive kind of a kind of a call, but um, some folks have complained that uh, um, that it's very annoying and it's very distracting that they hear that. So what I'm doing right now is I'm filming in front of a green screen and I'm going to um, overlay the background with that shot from my uh, <laughs> uh, wooded pr piece of property along the edges there and um, try to just drop it in the background with no cicada noise for, for anybody. We'll see how this turns out. <laughs> Appreciate your comments because uh, if that's what I got to do, um, I'll, I'll do it. The, the feedback is always uh, valuable to me. And if folks are annoyed or distracted by the uh, uh, sounds of nature in the background, then I'll try to figure out workarounds as I can. So, the, the affidavit that, that was released yesterday um, did lend itself to a bit of comedy. Um, there's a, <laughs> um, a great cartoon that uh, popped up uh, this morning and uh, a rather terrific tweet from uh, Donald Trump Jr. about uh, um, what, what his thoughts were for this. But we're never going to really find out what is motivating this, except that anybody that's on the left-hand side actually is experiencing full Trump derangement syndrome. There is so much malice and so much hate in their hearts and in their minds that they can't see past what I would consider the obvious here. There may have been some errors. There may have been some classification questions. There may have been um, all kinds of um, excuses for this or that. But to go to the extent that the FBI and the DOJ went um, last Monday was just absolutely uncalled for, unwarranted. Um, there was certainly less intrusive ways to make sure that whatever documents needed to be uh, safeguarded were properly safeguarded which was kind of one of their questions that they said, well, he doesn't have a secure facility there, even though they recommended that they lock up that storage room with a special lock and that it's under uh, um, Secret Service 
guard and protection and all that. So I, I really just don't know exactly what it is that motivates folks to act in this fashion except pure malice and hate. Um, that's, that's, I guess, from my heart. Hate is one heck of a nasty motivator for an awful lot of people. We've got a few folks in our circle of acquaintances, I guess, and family that are very, very uh, liberal and very, very left-leaning. And every time we post anything that um, has a conservative bent to it, they actually go crazy. Um, I find it very disheartening, but I'm not going to stop. If I've got something on my mind, I'm going to say it. I'm going to post it on Facebook, or I'm going to post it here on YouTube. And if those folks don't like it, that's their problem, not mine. And I hope you all take the same, same look at this. As far as anything else that's going on in the world today, today's Saturday. Um, August is almost um, in the bag right now. We've got a few days next week before the 31st, and we'll be into September, which is one of the first Burr months, and I am so looking forward to having some cool weather. Uh, forecast highs for today are supposed to be uh, well over 90 again tomorrow, again Monday, again Tuesday, again Wednesday. Um, I, I don't really see a whole lot of relief in sight. I, I watched a, a weather prognosticator, I guess, um, earlier today on YouTube that was talking about uh, a cool-off that may happen around the 5th or the 6th of September where we may get uh, a little bit of cooler Canadian air moving in, uh, so it will make it seem uh, 10 to 12 degrees cooler than um, it currently is forecast right now. So if we're at 90 or 92 degrees like it is forecast to be high today, then uh, gee, it may be uh, 78 to 80. Um, that's not really cool enough for me, but that's the way it goes. Um, as far as prepping activities go, I keep um, my finger on what's going on with the food shortage, the food crisis, the supply chain, what's happening to the farmers, what's happening with the droughts that seem to be uh, pretty much worldwide right now, and the fact that, um, that it's having a direct impact on our food supply and our future food supply. So I remain very, very concerned about what's happening. It's not so awful bad today. I didn't see when we were out shopping this week for groceries, um, I didn't see really any bare spots. I didn't see anything that was um, um, empty, uh, empty shelves, anything like that. So what we did see was available products that were a little bit more pricey than they have been in the past, like eggs and butter and chicken and beef and that kind of stuff. But that's the inflation part of it. So um, we'll have to see. Speaking of inflation, um, if you didn't see what happened on Wall Street yesterday, um, you should really just go take a look at the uh, um, historical trend here. And um, with, with the Dow Jones losing well over a thousand points yesterday, it's got to be one of the biggest single day drops of all times. And it was all in reaction to what the uh, Fed Chairman Powell um, made reference to during his uh, speech in the morning yesterday, around 10 or 10.30 or so. And um, he was basically calling for some very aggressive actions to be taken by the Fed to rein in inflation. Um, and he said it was going to be painful for us to uh, um, have to survive this as he tries to rein in inflation. 
Well, I would suspect the first thing that he should be recommending is a change in uh, our government's fiscal policy. Um, printing more money than we have to spend, forgiving student loans um, that are going to cost somewhere between 300 and 500 billion dollars. That's a lot of money. And how's it going to get paid for? It's going to get paid for by the working class, by higher taxes, by higher prices, which lead to more taxes on the goods that we buy via sales tax, uh, property values, uh, your property taxes on your real estate and your homes. Um, it's, it's just going to add to inflation, and I'm very, very concerned about what is in the pipeline right now and coming at us full bore. And I would suggest that you invest, that we all invest in tangibles. I'm talking food, water, clothing, energy, backup energies, uh, means for cooking, um, freezers, solar generators, whatever it is that you don't have, Take that little bit of extra money, if you've got it, and invest it in tangibles that you see you're going to need for the future. I don't know what else to tell you. Um, I'm, I'm not one to do a lot of fear mongering, but I remain very concerned about what's coming in the future. This is the Prepared Suburbanite reminding you to be prepared always, and I'll see you all on the next video.